Okay, so in this talk, uh, I'm going to be talking about um, simulating timed event data from parametric distributions, custom distributions, competing risk models, and uh, general multi-state uh, models. So plan for the talk. Um, I'm going to give a pretty brief um, overview of how we can uh, simulate from a range of both uh, simple and complex um, timed event data. And then I'll sort of... Uh, very briefly um, give a, uh, an introduction to a sort of new, more general framework for simulating um, from essentially an arbitrary uh, multi-state uh, model, which of course includes standard survival, competing risks as um, as special cases. Uh, and the reason why it's, it's going to be a pretty brief introduction to, to the framework is that I'm going to concentrate more on the implementation, the, um, the software. Uh, my service in package in uh, in Stata. So I'm going to go through lots of examples to show the sort of new capabilities um, and how we can hopefully simulate lots and lots of um, complex data, but in a pretty pretty easy way now. Okay, so a bit of background. Um, simulating data from sort of any sort of defined um, distribution can be pretty simple, or it can be uh, extremely um, complex, particularly in the uh, survival setting. So let's assume we have a, uh, a random variable, um, t, with associated cumulative distribution function, um, capital F. Well, to simulate survival times, observations from, from such a defined distribution, um, we simply uh, let our cumulative distribution function be represented by a uniform 0, 1, um, and then simply draw take random draws from such a, a uniform distribution, um, and those draws then end up representing simply um, centiles uh, from, our, from our CDF, represented by um, or defined by, by F. Substitute in uh, that draw u, small u this, in this case, um, set it equal to our cumulative distribution function at the uh, appropriate uh, observation, invert and essentially solve for t. So t is simply equal to the inversion, the inverse rather of our cumulative distribution function evaluated at that um, uniform draw, that centile. Okay, so to make that a bit clearer, hopefully, um, this is simply the, the CDF of a defined uh, Weibull distribution in, the, in this case. So on the x-axis representing um, t, uh, and on the y, I've got my cumulative distribution function, which of course goes from from zero up to up to one. So to simulate some observations, I simulate some draws from that uniform naught one distribution. So yeah, I represent each centiles, draw across uh, along the um, from the y-axis until I meet my uh, distribution function, and I simply go down and find the associated values of my survival time. And they simply represent the draws from my um, distribution, cumulative distribution function, um, f. So it's simply showing how we invert that um, cumulative distribution function to get my simulated um, survival times. So really simple. Now, sometimes it's really simple, sometimes it's not. Um, Solving for t uh, essentially relies on being able to invert that cumulative distribution function. Now, not only does it rely on being able to invert it, but of course, in the survival context, that CDF is a function of our cumulative hazard function. Therefore, we must also be able to um, integrate our hazard function. So I'm going to be talking about predominantly modeling on the hazard or cumulative hazard scale in this, in this talk. So to be able to solve for t, what we're interested in, we need to be able to evaluate not only our cumulative hazard function, but we also then need to be able to invert and solve for t. So this can, things can get complicated pretty quickly. Um, but to accommodate those challenges, uh, so um, as part of my PhD, I worked on this um, sort of general algorithm for, um, for solving um, for t, essentially. So for solving things like this equation. Um, and we developed uh, this uh, general procedure which um, util utilized uh, numerical integration for evaluating the cumulative hazard under a general hazard function definition. And that gets wrapped up within uh, numerical root finding to essentially find the root to that equation, so to solve for t. Uh, 
Now it gives us the most general um, form to simulate survival times from um, an arbitrary hazard function, so whatever you like. So to make that even more general, uh, with this approach, we can simulate from essentially any hazard or cumulative hazard um, function. So here I simply added in uh, the capability of defining sort of delayed entry times, which we'll, which we'll need for later. Especially for the uh, competing risks and even more so for the uh, multi-state setting. Now, so this um, general algorithm can be applied to uh, simulating from, uh, in other words, the, the total, the overall hazard function, which is made up of the sum of cores or transition specific um, hazard functions leaving a particular state. So we can use exactly the same um, algorithm, it's, but my total hazard uh, or total cumulative hazard is now made up of the integral of the sum of uh, competing core specific hazard functions. Um, in the multi-state setting, this may be a uh, transient state, um, moving on to a further state, so we have a time of entry. So we also can account for this using delayed entry, so we're simulating from a conditional um, distribution. Everything can now apply and still utilize that, um, that general simulation method. So moving quickly on to some uh, examples. So today I'm going to go through um, at least one example of how to use ServSim uh, from each of the four um, core settings uh, that ServSim can now, um, can now handle. And that includes simulating from uh, standard parametric distributions. Now these are the most convenient, these are the most um, computationally efficient because we have a, a cumulative hazard function that we can analytically solve and we can also in invert directly and write t is equal to something, so it's very much a, a simple sort of generate um, statement of vector operation. Then I'll look at simulating from a custom user-defined hazard or cumulative hazard function. So again, that requires numerical integration, root finding, at least one of the two. Um, and then moving towards um, simulating competing risk data from core specific um, model setting. Uh, and finally, simulating um, from multi-state um, survival data as well. Uh, and what I haven't mentioned there is that I will also look at simulating from estimated uh, fitted um, Merlin models, which I'll come to as well. Okay, so this is uh, a view screenshot of the um, updated uh, main help, help file for ServSim, looking at the four core areas that ServSim can, can handle. Simulating from standard parametric distributions, simulating from user-defined um, distributions, so simulating the standard survival data, simulating from an estimated uh, Merlin model, and simulating competing risks or more general multi-state uh, models as well, where transitions can be defined in terms of standard parametric distributions or user-defined um, functions. Okay, so first set of examples, simulating survival times from standard parametric distributions. So let's start by um, simulating from a Weibull distribution with a binary treatment group, we'll call it TRT, treat, uh, and a continuous covariate age under proportional hazards. So this is my data generating um, model. Weibull based on hazard function, proportional hazards, uh, adjusting for um, with a treatment and an age variable and associated log hazard ratios. So I'm going to simulate 300 observations, pick some distributions for the covariates, which are pretty obvious. So binary treatment group, normally distributed um, age, so with mean 50, standard deviation of three, nice and simple, 300 observations. And I'm going to call ServSim. Specify I want to simulate from a Weibull distribution with uh, shape and scale, or scale and shape rather, um, parameters for the baseline function and associated log hazard ratio. So treatment minus 0.5 and age 0.01. So here I specify these in terms of the coefficients. So these are log hazard ratios. And I give ServSim a new variable name, so it will simulate from my defined model and store those simulated survival times in my new variable as time. Simple as that. Now there I didn't 
uh, account for any sort of uh, centering, uh, left, right, or interval. Um, if we wanted to apply right centering, we could apply uh, a common centering time using, for example, max time five. We just add that option, and all observations would be censored um, after five, uh, let's, let's call it years. Or we could generate observation specific potential censoring, right censoring times such as, so here we'll just generate five multiplied by uniform draws, so that would do random random censoring times anywhere between zero and five um, years, and add the max time option, but this time instead of a number, I could pass a variable name, saying that they're already generated. Now I've added right censoring, I need to add a second new variable name, so not only are we gonna store the event time, but I'm also gonna store an event, it's gonna generate an event uh, or censoring indicator. So any censored observations, die two would be set to zero, and s time two would be set to the censoring time. We could also make this more complicated. We could make it more flexible. We could add time dependent effects, for example. So we could relax proportional hazards assumption in our data generating model using the TDE option. We could list variables with coefficients. There's also a TDE function option where we can specify what function we want to interact those variables with um, to allow changes over time. I'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, and again, we could simulate from a conditional model. We could allow for left truncation, delayed entry using the L truncated um, option. And again, we can pass a variable name to L truncated to allow for obs observation specific um, entry times, left truncated times. Okay, next one. Simulating survival times from a user-defined, uh, potentially log, potentially cumulative uh, hazard function. So it starts simple again. Now I'm going to simulate 500 observations. I'm setting my seed for re reproducibility, of course. Generate a binary treatment group um, uh, and define a user-defined baseline hazard function. So the most flexible form of simulating survival data within ServSim is by specifying um, what I call a custom hazard or, um, or indeed a custom cumulative hazard function such as this, so I'm still simulating proportional hazards, but now I'm gonna define my own baseline hazard function, and it's gonna be a, for, uh, for arguably a polynomial function. I was gonna say fractional polynomial, but essentially a polynomial. We could do this on the hazard scale, or we could actually specify a user-defined log um, hazard uh, function using the log hazard uh, option of um, observe sim. So this is my fully defined data generating uh, model. So instead of defining a distribution, now I'm using my log hazard and I'm defining that user-defined um, baseline uh, log hazard function. Now you'll notice a couple of things. It's written in uh, Metacode, which is data's matrix programming language. Now we have to use uh, colon operators um, before any sort of mathematical operator. This is because colon operators apply uh, element by element um, matrix operations, or when I'm, this just has to happen because things get plugged in here uh, behind the scenes. Um, and the only other thing, the important thing to note is that whenever you write time, you specify time in your definition of your uh, log hazard function, you need to write T within curly brackets because this gets substituted um, behind the scenes. So it's the only two things to, um, to, to be careful with representing time using T in, in curly brackets and making sure to use the colon operators, okay? But essentially we can write whatever we like in here. We can use all of the functions already defined within Meta, so you've got complete flexibility for whatever you wanna write uh, in there. But we can still use the covariates option to pass baseline covariates, so treatment multiplied by my log hazard ratio. And again, apply maximum common right censoring time um, in here. We could, uh, we could um, uh, incorporate non-proportional hazards. We could make that treatment effect diminish over um, as a function of log time by incorporating a time-dependent time um, effect. Now this is done uh, using the TDE function and the TDE options setting, uh, in this case, I'm gonna set my coefficient beta one to be 0.03. So I'm adding treatment, variable of interest, its associated coefficient and the function of time that I want to interact 
it with. And again, this can be written in meta code. This can be written as simply or as flexibly as you like. But again, if you're using T time, it must be represented with, uh, within curly brackets. And this will simply form a interaction between treatment, its coefficient, and the function of um, time to simulate from, from a, a non-proportional hazards um, model. Alternatively, uh, we could instead simulate from a model on the cumulative hazard scale. So there's another option. We could have used log C hazard. So if we wanted to find a model, simulate and assume a data generating uh, model on the cumulative hazard or log cumulative hazard scale, um, we could do that uh, as well. Okay, moving on. Simulating survival times from a fitted Merlin survival model. So rather than simulating from a particularly particular um, defined data generating uh, model, essentially specified by by hand, picking parameters, however however you choose to do so, we could directly simulate from a fitted model, which can be particularly useful. So ServSim is now synced up with my Merlin um, command, or with this newer uh, wrapper function called ST Merlin, which fits um, survival. Uh, models. It's a convenience wrapper for Merlin um, for easier use when uh, when estimating sort of standard um, survival models. So I can load in this commonly used breast cancer example. ST set my data, declares it to be survival data. ST Merlin is just like any other ST reg, STPM2 uh, commands. It uses the underscore variables. I fit proportional hazards, uh, a viable model adjusting for um, hormonal therapy. Fits my model nice and simple. Now I have, you know, biologically plausible estimates from a data generating model. I've got a sensible hazard ratio, sensible baseline parameters. Um, now I could simply use those and simulate observations from that fitted model. How do we do that? Really simple. We simply store the model object, calling it uh, whatever we like. Yeah, such as the extremely imaginative name of uh, M1, stores that um, fitted uh, Merlin model, and we simply pass that model directly to ServSim. Same syntax, new variable names to store the survival times, censoring times, event indicator. Use the model option, in this case, to tell Merlin, um, tell ServSim the name of the, the stored estimated Merlin model. Um, we do need uh, a max time option, so we do need to apply uh, right centering in this case. Um, but it's as simple as that. That will simulate as many observations as we have in our um, data set from that fitted model. We could then simply fit, uh, refit the same model as before, but of course we get slightly different results because we have um, sampling variability. So again, I've simulated 686 observations because that that's how many observations we had in our data set. But I can simply ST set with my newly generated simulated survival times and event indicator, fit the same model, and we get um, pretty good estimates um, as before, similar estimates as, uh, as expected. This is a really nice way to um, essentially manipulate uh, covariate distributions to look at impact of, of things like that. Um, from your data set, you, we can simply change my hormonal, my, um, hormonal therapy uh, variable uh, and simply recall ServSim. We don't have to change anything in ServSim. We could simply manipulate the observed values of, um, of hormone in our, in our data set um, to play around with things. So ServSim can simulate from any of the available survival models uh, within uh, Merlin or the ST Merlin wrapper, um, but it doesn't yet support simulation from uh, multivariate models uh, or a model containing uh, random, random effects. Okay, simulating competing risk data from specified core specific hazard functions. So I'm slowly but surely increasing the complexity of what I'm simulating from here. So now I'm going to simulate from a competing risk model with two competing events. Uh, I've written it out just so it's extremely clear. Um, the first is going to be a core specific hazard. Now it has a viable distribution with no covariates. The second uh, has an exponential distribution, uh, but with a beneficial um, treatment effect. Okay, and right censoring is applied at 10 years. <laughs> 
So let's have a look. Simulating, setting my seed, simulating, I want a thousand observations, binary treatment group. And now I need to define three new variable stubs. So I've got time, state, and event, and we'll talk through those. So I'm gonna use the hazard uh, and then a number option. So I've got hazard one and hazard two. Now by default, a service will assume that these are competing core specific hazard functions. The first one, I wanna define distribution. It's got a Y bot, so I can use the distribution option. So I've got options within options. So this within hazard one completely specifies that first um, core specific hazard. It's a Y-ball distribution with associated scale and shape parameters as defined. Now the second one, hazard two, baseline function exponential, define that parameter, but I also wanna adjust for um, the effect of treatment, which has a log hazard ratio of um, minus 0.5, okay? So it completely specifies each of the core specific um, hazard functions in a pretty simple um, way. Then another overall option specifies the maximum observation time. So that will apply right sensory, regardless of which event uh, may have occurred or not. Okay. Servsim so now generates some new variables. It's going to generate um, the time of origin and the state at which those uh, the observations started in. By default, Servsim will assume everyone starts in uh, a state one at time zero, or state zero rather, uh, at time zero and it has two competing risks. So it has one potential transition, one potential movement to go to. Uh, and for each potential transition, it will generate, uh, or rather for the observed transition that it finds, it will generate an event indicator, whether it experienced the event or whether it was censored at that maximum follow-up time. Okay, so just repeating that. Each hazard and the number defines a core specific hazard function with specified distribution and associated baseline parameters, covariate effects, and time, if I could spell, time dependent um, effects as well. Now, each of those hazard functions can be as similar or as different as required. So let's have a look. This is just listing the first of those five, uh, first five observation that ServSim has generated based on those new variable stubs um, that we specified in the core. So in my data set, I had my binary treatment group. It generated time zero. That represents the time at which uh, observations became at risk of the transition. So because I didn't specify my L truncated option, everyone started at time zero in um, state zero, in state one, sorry. So this is what I'm calling observation start in uh, state one at time zero. They have potential transition. They could go to state two or state three. Okay. In this case, they did one movement. So at time one, the next time point, first observation after four and a half years, let's call it, they move to state two. Okay. So moving from state one to state two, it's represented by um, hazard number one. It's the first transition. It was an observed event, so it's tagged as a one. Second and third observations, well, after 10 years, um, they were still in state one. So they were uh, unsurprisingly censored for that um, at, uh, at the maximum follow-up time. Observation number four, again, started in state one at time zero. They moved to state three after 2.84 years. And of course, that was tagged and as event because they moved um, state. Last one, moved to state two after 1.57 years. So it's a bit tricky to match up um, transition numbers and states, um, but hopefully it will become clearer with some more um, examples. And as I said, left truncated was not specified, but we could actually define the time at which um, observations entered that first initial state. So going briefly back through that, state one to state two is the transition rate governed by hazard one. State one to state three is the transition rate governed by state two, uh, by hazard number two. And we can see which of those events occurs if we tabulate them up where everyone ended up. It shows that um, by 10 years, 484 observations were right censored, so they were still in the initial starting state. 414 are in state two and 102 are in state three.
Now, of course, we could go and make this even more complicated. I won't go through this in too much detail. I'm simply now extending this. I'm going to simulate from a competing risk model with three competing events. And as I said, each of these three, each of these core specific hazard functions can be as similar or as different as you like. What I'm doing here is I'm using a user function. So rather than simulating it from a defined parametric distribution, we can actually define user-defined hazard functions for each of those core specific hazards. For the, so we've got one in there for the first um, core specific hazard and a completely different one for the second. I've also added in a time-dependent um, treatment effect. For this one, again, we can apply the TD, TDE function and TDE options within each specific hazard if we want to. Okay, so we've got complete flexibility for each of these things. It can be nice and simple or really pretty pretty complex. Okay, everything just turns through the algorithm in the background. Generate my new variables and we get the same sort of thing. Where did they go? 341, still in state one. 345 have moved to state two, so that's they did the transition for hazard one. 30 went along hazard two, and 284 went along hazard three and ended up in state four. Now I currently uh, limit you um, to up to 50 core specific um, hazard functions, just in case you're feeling um, yeah, particularly uh, adventurous or indeed risky. Okay, so moving swiftly on. Simulating from an illness death model. Now, this is a, a natural extension to simulating from competing risks. What we wanna do first is uh, define a transition matrix for our illness death. Uh, model. So it has three states. State one, uh, we'll call it a healthy state. Observations can move from uh, state one to state two or state three. Now state two is, a, is an intermediate illness state. Observations can come from state one and move on to state three. Finally, state three is an absorbing um, death state. Observations can come from state one or state two, but of course not leave once they've entered it. So how do we define that? Well, we can define that in terms of our three potential transitions. So transition number one goes from state one to two. Transition number two goes from state one to three. And transition number three goes from state two to state three. Now those transitions can be defined by the following transition matrix. Okay, really simple to define its data, but we can make that a bit clearer by renaming our columns and, and rows that represent some more intuitive sort of state names, healthy, ill, and dead. So patients' observations can go from healthy state to the illness state, for which is transition number one. And they can go from healthy state to death state, which is transition number two. And they can go from an illness state to a death state for transition number three. Going back to simulating observations, a thousand observations, binary treatment group, and back to my hazard one, hazard two, and hazard three. Now, the only thing uh, I think uh, that I've changed here is I've now added this trans matrix option and I'm passing that transition matrix that I just defined, which specifies the illness death um, structure. So you may have noticed before for the comedian risks, I didn't specify the trans matrix op option. So it automatically assumed that each of my hazard functions here were core specific um, competing risks. Okay by overriding, by specifying the illness death model, hazard number one now represents um, transition number one, hazard number two represents transition number two, and hazard number three now represents transition number three. Okay, so really simple to extend this to a more general illness death um, setting. And we can see what Servsim has um, created. So the first observation, again, all observations started in, um, at time zero in state one. First observation, well, after three years, after the right censoring time, they were still in state one. So no event and obviously no subsequent observations. Observation number four, well, they moved to state two after 0.96 years. So they had that uh, event. Subsequently, of course, they've entered state two, so they could move on to state three. In this case, after three years, they didn't. They remained in that illness um, death state. So again, no event was observed for that particular um, transition. Last one, or sorry, observation number 16. 
moved to the Illness State just after a year, had that event, and indeed moved on and subsequently died after about two and a half years. So moved on to State 3, so had that event. And again, the final one uh, was censored for both um, for both competing risks, both moving to the ill or the death state directly. So remained in the healthy state after three. Um, ah, no, what am I talking about? It's nonsense. They went directly to uh, the death state, sorry. So after 2.3 three years, they moved directly to death state without going through the, um, the illness state. Okay, I'm sure that's clear. Okay, and if it wasn't clear, then you can uh, you can go back and read that in your in your own time. That puts it much more explicitly. So there's lots of extensions that I that I could go into uh, a bit more. We could actually simulate from a semi Markov uh, model by using there's a, there's a reset option. So particularly in that hazard three in the illness death, we could um, reset the clock once observations enter the um, illness state. Um, now the simulated event times at Sarasin returns will still be calculated on the main overall time scale, which in this case is the time since initial uh, start state. So there is a start state option, which I haven't mentioned, which you can define. Observations don't necessarily have to start in that initial state one. They could start in um, any state, different states as well. Uh, and of course we could have um, a much more complex multi-state structure, i.e. more states or even reversible transitions. All of these um, currently work, uh, are supported by, um, by Serbsim. Okay, to finish up. So simulating biologically plausible timed event data really is crucial to um, not only understanding, but I think evaluating and of course developing um, methods. So I think it's, it's crucial to be able to simulate not only from simple distributions, but from realistic distributions guided by estimated models, real data, um, and hopefully uh, Servsim has uh, provides uh, the tools um, to simulate survival data, timed event data, multi-state data, um, from pretty much anything you can uh, you can think of. So a couple of links to finish. Um, a link to a, a preprint paper that's under review at the Stata Journal at the minute, essentially going through most of what I talked about, a couple of other things as well. Um, and there's lots more uh, examples uh, and code uh, all on my on my website as well. And a couple of references. Okay, that's it.